Uh, immediately after the race, uh, Ken Miles was ex extremely upset uh, in that he was um, um, the resident uh, Shelby driver. Um, having said that, both Bruce and I did a lot of testing uh, for Ford and for um, Shelby um, in in '65 and '66, and of course the um, the um, um, the car that you mentioned before, the X car, which was affectionately known as um, as Big Ed um, after the Ford Eds, <laughs> um, that was um, built at the McLaren factory. I, I've always had mixed emotions about the that result because uh, uh, early in the race um, we were the only uh, car that started on Firestone tyres and um, um, all the rest of the Fords were on uh, Goodyear's and um, it was light rain at the start and we started on an intermediate tyre that had never been tested to be honest at those sort of speeds and um, we kept um, chunking or losing um, losing treads and we had a, two or three pit stops um, early in the race and got ourselves well behind and um, uh, then the decision was made to switch the car onto Goodyear which um, was a difficult decision at the time because both Bruce and I were contracted um, with, with Firestone um, but the end result was that after we switched to Goodyear, Bruce said to me uh, at a pit stop, he said, let's just drive the doors off this thing for the rest of the race because we've got well behind and we've got nothing nothing to lose. Um, and by um, the next morning, we did, were actually in the lead. And um, at the point that the ease sign came out, um, and I really can't remember how many hours before the end of the race that was but it was certainly three or four hours we had a substantial lead and um, Bruce slow, who was in the car at the time slowed down and um, Ken didn't and um, caught us up and actually passed us in a pit stop um, so I've always um, um, had mixed feelings about the so-called dead heat because uh, given a uh, straight race we would have won quite comfortably so um, uh, I've always sort of consoled myself to a degree with, with that but the um, in terms of the, uh, um, the, the the tour around the states following the race it was um, absolutely wonderful we were very well received um, we had a um, had a wonderful dinner at uh, in New York the first night we were there and then went to um, Dearborn or Detroit um, and um, I think we were in Chicago at one point in Los Angeles um, uh, but it was a um, it was a um, a, a fantastic um, reception and certainly um, there was no resentment on the part of the Ford hierarchy the wrong people had won It was certainly a growing up experience, um, um, growing up very quickly, I guess. The, um, um, you know, I started out as um, as one of four drivers, basically. There was uh, Mike Parks and uh, Ludovico Scarfiotti, and um, we um, went from four drivers in January to um, basically one driver in June, and... Um, um yeah it was um yeah I mean, it was a tragic tragic year but um um it um uh, it was a case of really um, just getting on with the job and um um i um uh, bandini um was a, a person i really didn't know very well at all till i joined the team and um um, he'd always been um, slightly harshly treated, I think, by the Italian press, um, in that there was a famous incident between him and uh, and Graham Hill in Mexico, and I think it was in about 1964 when um, Graham had a chance of winning the championship and ended up um, uh, getting punted off the circuit by um, by uh, Lorenzo, which in turn um, allowed. Um, uh, um, 
John Turdy's to win the um, win the title. So there was always a connection made um, between Bandini and that incident. But um, I found him to be a lovely guy, and we had those two wins at Daytona and um, um, the um, um, thousand kilometres at Monza, and um, it was um, such a tragedy, Monaco, um, and it um, certainly knocked the team back um, a, a great deal. But uh, it was a uh, yeah, uh, as I say, I had to sort of grow up very quickly. I think. When I uh, when I went to Ferrari, I was um, I've got to say I was um, in fear of Ferrari a bit because it, uh, you know he had a reputation for um, playing drivers against drivers and um, and of course as I mentioned I was one of four drivers and there was the absolute um, ideal situation to um, to play one against the other but uh, I've got to say I never really. Um, was conscious of that happening. I, I guess I realised very early on that I needed to um, uh, try and prove that I was pretty quick because it was basically four people going for for, for two places. Um, but um, I, throughout the three years that I was there, I actually always found him very supportive and um, um, and was. Um, quite happy to actually listen to um, suggestions. He didn't always act on them, but um, um, I, uh, perhaps I had the advantage of being, um, you know, quite young and whether he had a sort of a sort of fatherly view towards me, I don't know, but uh, uh, a lot of what I'd heard I never found to be true and um, I, I really had a great relationship with him. Yeah, um, a wonderful car that uh, that '68 um, chassis. It was, um, um, it, it really was a a good car, both with without wings, and uh, and then the wings came along. Um, in um, uh, well, I think we were the first to actually run a wing at Spa in um, in in '68, and I remember I had pole there by four seconds, I think, which um, um, even in those days was quite a lot. But the interesting thing was. Um, uh, well, after that, everybody said, oh, God, we've got to have wings because he was four seconds a lap quicker. But the interesting thing was I did exactly the same time within a, a tenth or two with the wing and without the wing uh, because what you gained around the corners, you actually lost down the straight. So um, um, in hindsight, it was a mistake because at that point, I think, wingless, we had the best chassis out there. Uh, then uh, when Lotus put those huge suspension mounted wings on, um, which is what Seppi Surfit had at, uh, at Brands Hatch, um, uh, we lost a lot of the chassis advantage that we had. Um, Ferrari would never put suspension mounted wings on because he said they were too dangerous um, in that um, it was too difficult to make them um, uh, completely um, or robust enough to be completely safe and uh, ultimately he was absolutely proved right because uh, they had some um, horrific accidents uh, amongst them Jochen and Graham at uh, Barcelona in, uh, in 69 which was the end of those big wings but um, uh, no, great car that 68 Ferrari lacked uh, power compared to the um, to the Cosworth, um, but uh, and was extremely thirsty too. I, it always amuses me um, when the current Formula One today um, they talk about heavy fuel loads and uh, you know they've got 150 or 160 kilos of fuel. I remember starting off the front row at Monaco with a Ferrari in '69. Um, Jackie was alongside me with the um, with the Matra um, Cosworth, and he probably had um, all of 170 liters of fuel, and I, we had 250 liters in the Ferrari, and uh, mm -hmm. needless to say, beat me to the first corner. <laughs> <laughs>